view. What a scorcher. Perfect day for a coastal walk. What a beautiful day. It's sort of in the high 20s. It's perfect. So I've spontaneously just dash down here to the coast to do a walk I think a fantastic walk there's so much in this walk it's incredible I, I did a walk down to Folkestone from Folkestone to the high sound mirrors last year you remember that one at the time I realized there were some more sound mirrors on the other side between Folkestone and Dover there's all sorts of stuff so I'm going to do that walk today the two harbors walk from Folkestone here Folkestone Harbour down to Dover Harbour the famous Dover the white cliffs and all that We've got all sorts of, we've got another sound mirror up here, fantastic sound mirror. We've got Martello Towers, a crumbling coastline. And apparently, according to the Visit Kent website, which may be a little bit biased, we've got some of the most beautiful views in the whole of England. So buckle up. And the English really do love a day at the seaside, don't they? So many people down there. There's going to be some real proper lobster pink backs and necks tomorrow morning or even this evening in fact but can't beat a day on the on the seaside in what I imagine is freezing cold sea and it's uh it's about two o'clock just before two o'clock so hottest part of the day mad dogs and Englishmen and all that so off we go to Dover to Dover And now we've got to ascend the steps here at Baker's Gap to head up to the cliff top. So this part of the cliff here is known as Baker's Gap. And it was named after an excise officer who was killed whilst chasing smugglers, because this is where they would often bring their contraband ashore. And there was a little stream, I think, they used to unload their wear onto and, and bring it inland and the excise men ambushed them one night a running fight took place along this cliff top here and a name man named baker fell to his death or was killed here welcome to folkestone warren it talks here about how folkestone has been the target for invaders for 2000 years We're going to be seeing some evidence of the defensive measures next so up here on the cliff top, we have Martello Tower number three. One of the coastal defences built to defend Britain against Napoleon I's gigantic army. We'll talk more about that when I get up there and I can get my breath. So between the years of 1803 and 1805, it's said that you could look out across the English Channel from here and with the naked eye, see the white tents of Napoleon's vast army on the other side of the channel there between Boulogne and Calais. 130,000 men were planned to sail across the channel in 3,000 barges. Napoleon apparently said, the channel is but a ditch. The person that can conquer that can conquer the world. Now Napoleon never got those troops onto those barges to sail across the channel, which is notoriously a very treacherous stretch of water. Um, and he was defeated, I think, in 1805 at the Battle of Trafalgar. And the French Navy was destroyed at the Battle of Trafalgar. And Britain seemed relatively safe from, from invasion by the French for a short period of time. But in those years, it was named the Great Terror. There was a great fear that Napoleon the, what they call him, the, uh, I want to say, the Corsican Ogre, I think he was called, was a great threat to Britain. And there were militias organised and the coastal defences here were organised against that invasion. And they still stand today. There are a number of these Martello Towers, these fantastic structures still along the coast. And they also form part of the Second World War defences as well. But they're a real reminder, I think, in a way, and being up here, of how that stretch of water, in a lot of ways, is defined the nature and the character of this island, not just the history of it, but it's also done something to our minds slightly, even though so many British people originally came across that stretch of water. <laughs> and my ancestors on my mum's side came across there not that long ago.
just looks like that might be another Martello Tower there, a brick one, just nestled into the hillside. So the English Coast Path sign is pointing along this track here, but there is a beguiling path that goes down, which was, you know, that's kind of where I instinctively want to go, but I guess I've got to get up onto that cliff top, right? So apparently the finest view in all of England is uh, from up there on that cliff top, so I guess that's where I should go, rather than the rather beguiling beach beneath it. I know some of my international viewers might think 26 degrees is actually a little bit chilly. <laughs> you wouldn't even get Heidi, my wife, camper van. You wouldn't even get Heidi, who's Australian for those that you don't know, in the sea at this temperature. She'd think it was still a little bit on the cool side. But in England, 26 degrees is considered almost heatwave weather. And, you know, despite the fact, yes, I've walked in 40 degree heat in Australia and in India and in Thailand and other places where I've gone trekking, it's pretty hot today for, <laughs> for me. Yeah, so here's the other Martello Tower. This one not painted white, but still it's old bricks. Right, I've now got the steepest part of this walk now. Wish me luck. I'm nearly at the top, but I've had to take a little rest here in the shade. It was just like, wow, this is a tough climb in this heat. I think it'd be a tough climb in any heat, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it's quite hard work. But I'm right, right near the top now. So I thought, be sensible. So we appear to now be joining the North Downs Way, wow. This little path here takes us up onto the cliff top. Wow, you can just see the top of the Martello Tower where we were not that long ago, so you can see how high up we've come. We're on that cliff top now. I'm not sure if this is what they mean by the finest view in England, but it certainly is an amazing view, isn't it? An absolutely cracking view. What do you reckon? Where's the finest view in England? Is this it? And this sculpture here is called Down to Earth, sort of number two, made from stainless steel and it's a sculpture of a, a downed junkers. A German aircraft, and it looks like a, it's by a German artist, Mr. Hex. So, this is the Battle of Britain Memorial, a very powerful spot because this would have been a key kind of location in the Battle of Britain, a key battleground in the skies over the Kent coast, thick with fighter aeroplanes and bombers. Also here, Bob, the squadron dog, the ever loyal squadron dog, waiting for his master to return. This path here is named after John Beasley, DFC, one of the Battle of Britain pilots, a hurricane pilot. And this is the memorial wall dedicated to those aircrew who flew during the Battle of Britain, 10th of July 1940 to the 31st of October. 1940. Often seen as the defining moment for Britain in the Second World War. The life expectancy of a British fighter pilot during the Battle of Britain I think was incredibly short. I'll put the figure on the screen but it was not good. They weren't expected to live more than I think a few weeks. Lord Dowding, Air Chief Marshal and Sir Keith Park. Mm. 
lunch in the uh, cockpit cafe. Bargain, just a fiver for all that. And actually, look, you can see here where the, the path is right near an eroded section of the cliff top, look. And it goes straight down there. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's not great, is it? You wouldn't want to slide off the path down there. So the path, well, it doesn't quite hug the cliff top here, but it's incredibly close to the cliff top, and it's just absolutely stunning. What an incredible place to be. I'm so glad I just took the spontaneous decision to, to come out here today. I'll, uh, I'll completely be completely transparent with you. At like 11.38, I was just considering going back to bed, having another snooze. I was just tired, I woke up too early today. And then it got to about half 11, I thought, oh, I feel a bit, or 11 o'clock. So maybe I should just go back to sleep rather than go out for a walk. And then suddenly I woke up and thought, no, I'm going to go out somewhere, I'm too tired. I looked at my laptop at 11.38 and thought, I saw this on my list of walks. I keep a long list of walks that I want to do. I saw this, Folkestone to Dover, looked up the trains, saw there was a train at 11 minutes past 12. And I caught that train. I quickly packed my stuff, dashed down to the tube, got the tube to Stratford. Running through Westfield when it's packed like that is like it's like a crazy computer game as you're dodging through people and trying to find all the angles. And I got on the train with about two, three minutes to spare. So <laughs> I love these kind of very spontaneous. It just makes this so much more rewarding somehow. So somewhere up here, we have the Abbot's Cliff Sound Mirror. I visited the Sound Mirrors at Hive last year, last spring. But I think this is bigger. Another mazy little cliff top path here. Wow. This is a lovely bit of cool shade here with the sea just there through the trees. The path down through the woods was incredibly steep and it took me along a beautiful chalk path beneath the cliffs. As I continued to go further down towards the sea, I did start to wonder whether this was in fact the right way. And when I got down near the beach, a conversation with a dog walker confirmed my worst fears that there was no way ahead. The path just led out to the sea and I was gonna have to walk back up the incredibly steep path back up through the woods. Luckily for me, there was a really shady cave where I could take a rest catch my breath before carrying on up to the cliff top. Even so, I wouldn't change that walk. I would still take that path down through the woods. It was one of the highlights of the whole walk. So it's a beautiful view, looking far out to sea. And I think this must be one of the most stunning walks I've ever done. Another ever so slightly precarious bit along here. I think it's fine as long as the footpath is coherent, but otherwise, straight down there. It looks like the footpath just goes flying off the edge of the cliff, doesn't it? 
So the North Downs Way actually goes along this, this well, it looks like a tarmac road, a path or a road here. So I've come up off that path that led off the, uh, the cliffside one. It's really gnarly. It was like it kept turning my ankle all the time. You and it looks quite benign, doesn't it, compared to the one along the cliff top? But it's much more treacherous. So I'm gonna walk along here, and I think the Abbot's Cliff sound mirror is just ahead. This is great. I'll probably have to put a screenshot uh, on the screen so you can see it. But my, my mobile phone provider thinks I'm in France. My roaming passport is kicked in. <laughs> so it shows you basically how close we are to France. The Channel Tunnel is basically running beneath the sea here, so that's hilarious. So this concrete structure here I think is another remnant of Second World War defensive structures. Gazing out across the Channel, looking for impending danger. There's a little floral tribute here to somebody. path there is just a little bit too close to the edge for me with nothing between you and the sheer drop. <laughs> Not great with heights. And down here we have the Abbot's Cliff sound mirror. Quite different to the one at Hyde, actually very different. Um, still concrete but very different type of structure. Let's go and have a look down there and we'll learn a bit more about them I guess. So these amazing beautiful structures they were made uh, between 1916 and 1930 as an early attempt at a kind of primitive radar where they would literally just like a massive uh, what would you call it, like a parabolic mic in a way they would just gather the sounds in the center and then there was instrumentation that would lead to a person just a human being would sit there and listen for the sound of aircraft from a like a stethoscope i, I don't know how it worked here I can't see any opening. The one at high, someone sat underneath it, but this one, I don't know, they must have sat maybe down here and listened, perhaps. This has got the feel of a Pink Floyd album cover, hasn't it? They've really got a kind of Doctor Who type unit, early Doctor Who feel to them, haven't they? Weird kind of hybrid technology, primitive, but actually quite effective. I'll put a link below to the video I made when I walked to the Hythe sound mirrors, which are the other side of Folkestone. A little bit quite different in a way, much more bowl-like and with a little kind of, uh, I would say like a cubicle, like a, like a chamber beneath where the operator would sit with a stethoscope. And literally at the end of like a, a trumpet and they would listen for the sound of aircraft coming over the channel. And then they would mark the angle of the sound and then they would communicate by radio with the other sound mirrors down the coast and from the recordings along there they would triangulate the position of the aircraft um, and then track its flight across the channel. They're fascinating, fascinating kind of bits of well, technology, concrete technology, concrete computers if you like. Con well, concrete listening devices, beautiful kind of concrete listening devices. So I, I, I find them really beguiling and mystical in a way as much as like a stone circle almost they're kind of incredible monuments in the landscape the last stretch into dover now i think this is another defensive structure here either that or it could be like a cattle pen <laughs> i'm not sure but I think it's got the look of something to do with a, maybe an anti-aircraft battery or something like that. A return to the clifftop path. I think this area along here is called Samphire Ho. What a beautiful name. We must be getting close to Dover now, the port of Dover. With the, you see the big ships out there, the ferries and the cargo ships. I always find that exciting. If I had my passport on me right now, I'd be tempted to just hop on the ferry and head over the channel. There's the entrance to the harbour down there. So I think this is a Second World War battery here, embedded in the coast. 
in the cliff looking out to sea. I feel like we have to go and have a look. I'm sure it's used for drinking. Oh, wow. So the final bit of this walk promises to be every bit as spectacular as, uh, as the preceding eight miles or so. So gorgeous here. Wow. And there it is, the port of Dover and the famous white cliffs on the far side. I think the thing they call the white cliffs of Dover on the far side, but you can see those white cliffs just down here as well. Really is stunning all the way, isn't it? Look at this path now. Drop down here off this high ground, then up over that last headland and into the into the harbour. Amazing. So it looks as if the path takes me right past that long horned bull there who's looking my way. There's bulls here. They're bulls, or they could be horned cows. I do think horned cows exist. The thing slightly concerning me, there's also calves in this field as well. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. What do you reckon? They actually seem quite mellow. This is where you're seeing them moving in closer behind me and I don't realise it. And this is one of those things that's used in the clip of when hiking goes wrong or something like that. And there are these curious little brick towers here. I have a feeling they're probably more to do with the tunnel that's running beneath the ground here than they are the Second World War, but who knows, they could be. Wow, what a beautiful sight that is. The end of the walk is just down there at the, the harbour, at Dover Harbour. Now I think this might be Shakespeare Cliff, because the beach down there is called Shakespeare Beach. And apparently they believe that this is the cliff that inspired a passage in King Lear, Act 4, Scene 1 in fact. There is a cliff whose high and bending head looks fearfully in the confined deep. It feels fitting that the approach to Dover should be via a load of uh, articulated lorries. Can I, do, I find these big ports really exciting. Well, somewhere back there, I must have lost the North Downs Way because I can't believe this is the path, walking right here against the crash barriers. Well, that, that was a little bit of a palaver, actually, though. The, <laughs> I got pushed into the kind of freight entrances and those are big trucks you can see them down there but now I finally found my way up here to this road and I think the harbour's down there my sister and my dad are waiting for me down there actually which is lovely it's not a bad view of the white cliffs of Dover from here I'm not sure if we're going to get a much better view nice to get down onto the beach. I'd probably go for a paddle if I weren't meeting uh, Kathy and Dad. This is exciting. It's the cruise terminal. Please have your passes or tickets ready for inspection. The entry into the cruise terminal, that's amazing. So I'm going to wrap up the, the video here. I kind of found myself in a closed off area. Some guys just came up to me and said, hello, you all right? What are you doing here? This is a non-accessed place. There's only one road in. It's very peculiar. So the peculiar, <laughs> trying to meet up with Kathy, my sister and my dad, they're over there somewhere and I've got to walk all the way back and round. But what an amazing walk it's been. In some ways, this is the fitting end to that walk. It's been a, such a stunning, beautiful walk. Thank you so much for joining me. And I just love doing these these walks so much, it's lovely to come out here spontaneously and that must be one of the most beautiful walks I've done anywhere in the world, it's so stunning. So as I always like to say, I look forward to seeing the next walk wherever that may be. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I hope now I've got to try and find them, it could take me another half an hour to find them.
Anyway, <laughs> take care. But I don't want to have that as the ending. I found them here. Now I'm on the Esplanade, they're behind me at the Dover Patrol. So thank you for joining me on that amazing walk. It's one of the most spectacular walks I've done. It's strange because the harbour's kind of defensive in a way, isn't it? But now I'm at the beautiful Esplanade with the beautiful sea behind me. And I'm going to go in that place and have a couple of pints and something to eat with my family. So perfect end to an amazing walk. So I'll do it again. I look forward to seeing the next walk, wherever that may be. Could be anywhere. Probably going to be in London. I've been sent a really interesting book about the buildings of London. I'm going to do a walk around that, I think. Yeah.